Rest here. Blue here, I shined up. A pie, yes, sir. He got that of me also. Show us your God. Oh, yes, 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 God.
The truth of the matter is the Spirit of God says, I really want to turn your situation around. I really want to do it right now. But I'm waiting on your posture to shift. I don't care who you think you are. There's some preachers right now. Your church in trouble right now. And God said, I really want to help you out. But I can't bless who don't bless me. I cannot bless. Who will not bless me? But before I was a preacher, I was a praiser. And I didn't put my praise down when I became a preacher. I didn't get titled and get entitled. He let my mind, because I understand that if my people are going to praise, I got to leave them out and praise.
Because of the end of the Bahia. And if we want God to speak, we got to praise Him right. God gets nothing out of the preached word. But you know what God does? He sits back on the throne of heaven. And He said, I want to bless my people. But they got to open up their mouth.
text and nobody prophetic, please move. But I want to tell you what I hear the Lord saying in my right ear. Can I never hold Can you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor? The Holy Ghost told me to tell you that you have suffered long enough. And now it's time for you to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Clap your hands and give him praise. It's time. It's time. It's time for your church to get bigger. Because somebody gave a better offer. But the Holy Ghost said, wait till Monday morning. They're going to give you a call back. It's a four bedroom, two bathroom house. God said, wait till Monday morning. They're going to give you a call back. And they're going to tell you that the offer that was, that was higher than you, they just fell out. They can't reach you. I don't know. They don't know what happened. And then I heard the Holy Ghost say, then you're going to be able to name your punch. Oh, you yeah, not my son. Clap your hands. I'm trying to get out of here real quick. Yeah, Tasha. Yeah, Tabo, Satata. Tandabo. Yeah, Baba Shata. 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 Yeah, Baba Yes, Lord. Mm. Mm. Can I not say? Can I say this, Bishop Randolph? Can I say this, Pastor? I love y'all so much. I love y'all. I honor y'all so much. The Holy Spirit just told me, and, and, and it may not make y'all, I'm just radical like that. I'm just old school. And, and, and when I was younger, they, they, they got healed. They got healed because they were just radical. They didn't try to rationalize with God. They just, hey amen, friends, they could be paralyzed. And the man of God would say, get up and they'll just jump up. But I heard the Holy Ghost just say this. He said, he said, the reason, the reason prices are going up is because y'all are not praising me. My church ain't praising me. Uh -huh, yeah, that, that's the reason. Because I, I, I need you to do me a favor and then watch your neighbor's response after this. Because said neighbor, when praises go up, prices come down. He's saying, he's saying, he's about 
to show us that it is true. Because when you sit up and worship what's going on in the world, and this is what you said, man, stuff too high. Gas prices too high, houses too high. He said, you're praising that. You know, you know what to praise means? It means to speak over. But when praises go up, Christ is going to come down. Psalm 127, very, very quickly. Very, very quickly. I won't be before you long. I never hope somebody out. That is our theme of scripture, Psalm 127 and 1. And then we're going to go to 2 Samuel. And I just need, amen, praise the Lord. 2 Samuel, I believe it's chapter number, chapter number 6. I won't, amen, praise the Lord. And then, amen, we'll get out of your way. Grace and peace be multiplied to all the saints once again. Amen. For you have 2 Samuel chapter 6. And I just want the end of that. But Psalm 120, Psalm 127, that is our theme of scripture. Amen. Praise the Lord. And whenever, amen, whenever you get a theme, that's what you preach. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's that's old school teaching. Bishop, amen. Bishop Randolph, I honor you today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let me leave Randolph, I honor you. Amen. Bishop Cuz, I honor you, sir. Amen. Your lovely wife, I honor you. Amen. All the bishops, amen. The pastors, amen. Praise the Lord. We honor you tonight. Amen. Raymond, thank y'all for coming out. Amen. Praise the Lord. Love y'all so much. Amen. I appreciate y'all so much. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise If y'all give me, amen, can I have like 17 minutes? Is that good enough? 17 minutes? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because I realize, amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I realize. Amen. That, that every pastor in here has to prepare for tomorrow. Amen. Yes, praise the Lord. So we want to honor your time. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> we want you to have time to enjoy your family. Glory. Amen. And then, amen. Praise the Lord. Get ready. Amen. To minister to the people of God on tomorrow. Psalm 127, uh, verse 1, amen, and 2 says, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchmen wicked but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. So he giveth his beloved sleep. Amen. Praise the Lord. When I read that, and I just, I, something downloaded in my spirit now, but I will not attempt to do that because that'll be longer than I want to be. And I was, it was Psalm 3. Amen. Praise the Lord. We won't mess with that one. But we want to go to 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter number 6. Very familiar passage of scripture for those of us who peruse the Bible. I realize that we're in a new church, and I need the old old school church to just be with me for a minute. But I realize that we're in a new church that only reads their Bible when their pastor takes the text. Amen. Praise the Lord. But amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. We, we have to go back. Amen. Praise the Lord to being a Berean church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Where they hear the word and then they go back. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because there were some pastors in here. Can you help me see? You see? You see? Because I'm talking to. Amen. I'm just talking as I hear God. There were some pastors in here. You're not. You're not tired. Amen. Praise the Lord. You're in the host of yeah. You're not tired of doing ministry. You're tired of repeating yourself. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, Amen. Praise the Lord. Second Samuel chapter number six, beginning at verse number twenty. Then David returned to bless his household, and Michelle, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David. And said, how glorious was the king of Israel today, who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids and of his servants, as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovered himself. Here's what I want. And David said unto Mishael, it was before the Lord, which chose me before thy father and before all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel. Therefore, will I plead before the Lord, and I will yet be more vowed than thus, and will be base in my own eyes. In my own sight, and of the maidservants which thou hast spoken of, of them shall I be had in honor. Therefore, Michelle, the daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death. Right. To the day of her death. I, I need you to look at your neighbor and amen, praise the Lord, amen. And I need you to watch it because most of them, amen, they got saved 20 minutes ago. But I need you to tell your neighbor, I need God's glory. I need God's glory. Need his glory, and what what has happened is, and, and see what what has happened is. I, I'm going to be very, very, very short. And what has happened, uh, Bishop Randolph, is that we have we have we have raised up a church, 
amen, that is, that is more excited about the subject than the substance. Amen, praise the Lord. So if the title don't intrigue you or it don't move you and it don't make you shout, amen, praise the Lord, then you just tune the rest of it out. But I can't do nothing without God's glory. Amen, amen. amen. praise the Lord. Subject number two, subject number two is, is this. And you ain't got to talk to nobody because I know you didn't like how they responded to you. But you can take this for yourself and say, when the glory comes back, it's going to show me who really fucked me. Mm, I shall be, I not say that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, as, as, I, as, I, as, I, as I hasten to my clothes, Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, I, I grew up. I grew up in, a, in an old Pentecostal church. Amen. Praise the Lord. I grew up. Uh, it was uh, 1736 uh, Ellington Street, Memphis, Tennessee, 38108. It was the Calvary Church of God in Christ, and, and, and in that church, Amen. It was not luxurious like this one. It was a it was a red church, amen, praise the Lord, because they wanted it to be red because of the blood, amen, praise the Lord. There wasn't no carpet on the floor. It was just wood floor, amen, praise the Lord. I mean, we had benches. We didn't have no nice seats like this. And under the bench, there was something under the bench. I don't know if y'all ever know about it. Ask Siri about it. It was called a hymn, amen, praise the Lord, because we believed in singing hymns, amen, praise the Lord, because hymns were about him. I'm not saying half this stuff y'all singing today, I don't know. Who y'all singing to? Oh, yeah. You can you can take the song and you can relate it to a man or a woman or it can be about God. But 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 they sung songs like send it on down, Lord. Send it on send it on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. And, 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 if you was a sinner when I grew up, you were scared to come to church because they you would you would walk in the door and, and they would say, Power! Sit on the back row. They wouldn't. They wouldn't bowl like they are now, Bishop. Cause if they come sit in the front row, right after sinning, not even asking God for forgiveness, and they sit up in the house of God. But I grew up when watch this, watch this. When I grew up, the preacher couldn't even preach. I can't remember nothing. The preacher preached. All I knew, he would read the Bible, and he didn't even understand every word. He I ain't got nothing but old school for y'all today. He didn't even understand every word that he preached. Matter of fact, I told Hosabah, but there was a glory on his life. Hiya. They may not have been able to exegete, but they could see you in the spirit. And we got to go back to a place where we are number Hosah, where we ask God to give us discernment to show us who's running in and out of our churches. Because there is an anointing in every church that's in here. But the problem is there are some people in your church that the devil has sent to hinder God's glory. But tell your neighbor, I'm finna get the glory back. Uh-huh. And I'm gonna find out uh, who really is supposed to be in my church. So when I when I grew up Bishop running, when I grew up, and this is why I fell in love with you even before you started pastoring. I grew up because when I when I went and he was playing an organ because he's a dynamic singer. Those of you who don't know, they were singing those old school songs. Hey, my We didn't I didn't grow up in a sensitive church. They would sing stuff like I'm a soldier. In the army. I know they don't move none of y'all today. In the army of the Lord, they would say stuff like this. If I die, let me die. In the army of the Lohoshadabasha. They would say there was power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. You knew who you was coming to see when you came to church. Now, I don't know what's going to happen. And I'm talking about my church. I ain't talking about your church. I don't know what's going to happen when I walk in my church because, because now I never survive. As time has gone on, it seems like uh, the glory has made an exit from the church. Uh, you know why? Because we lowered the standard. Uh, but then I'm sure uh, somebody shout holiness. Hey, Shanda. That ain't an old school word. That's a biblical word. Uh, it means to be pure, blameless, uh, and undefiled. Uh, we didn't need security when I grew up in my church. There were folk that were the because I stayed in the ghetto. And dump dealers and drunks and alcoholics would walk in the church drunk and leave speaking in tongues. We can't even get folk that profess that they say to do half a tongue now. So so because of all of this now, we can preach real good. But one of my problems with this new church is that we can exegete stuff we can't execute. Explain to me what 
what you just said. Uh, that means we can give you the Greek and Hebrew, uh, but we can't live none of what we're preaching. Uh, we got a form of godliness. Uh, come on, preach, Charlie. Uh, but we deny the power thereof. He under the because somewhere along the line, uh, we forgot that this was God's house. Uh, tell your neighbor, this is the Lord's house. And when you come into the Lord's house, you got to watch your posture. Yeah. When you come into the Lord's house, there's a certain way you got to come in his house. My Bible says that when you come into the Lord's house, you got to enter into the gates with thanksgiving. Yeah. I know these scriptures you know, but you can't execute them. You got to enter his courts with praise. You got to be thankful unto him and bless his high name. And all of this is before you get to God. The reason, by the whole shot, the reason, Bishop Ronnie, it's so hard for you to have church is because you got to ram a word. But people wait till they get to church to want to have church. Tell your neighbor, I don't want to have church. However, I am a part of the church. The church is in me. You can catch me at Walmart and we can pray on the other side and tear up the deodorant and speak it in tongue because I'm not my shot. Because God lives in me. I know this ain't making no sense to y'all. Huh? I'm getting ready to get out of here. Huh? Because we understood. Uh, they understood something now. Huh? What well, that old church understood huh? that we don't understand now huh? is the thing, huh? that if the Lord don't keep the house, huh? it won't be kept. Not sure. Huh? I noticed something now. Huh? I noticed we got more names now huh? than ever. Huh? I'm the one God help me to preach today. What we are doing in this last hour, is we are falling in love with personalities and not the glory of God. What we are doing in this last hour, is we are being deceived by a false presence. Can I explain to you what I mean? Let me answer. If me, Bishop Ronnie, Bishop Cousin Sadabo, or Bishop got up and preached a message, you would look at us crazy. But if T.D. Jakes came in and preached the same message, you would be around here hollering and running. Not because they're of the glory, but because you're in love with the personality. I need you to do me a favor and I need you to ask your neighbor, do you really know God? Because what I am afraid of is that if most of us, if they didn't have a pastor, we wouldn't be saved. What I am afraid of, he under the that if God took us leaders out of here, then the church would be in trouble. That's why the devil has you fighting your leader so much. Become that be outside. Because he wants you to reject the only thing that's keeping you alive. I need you to do me a favor and say, neighbor, my leader is praying for me. And it is because the prayers of my leader that I'm still here today. I know you don't think so. I know you your own pastor now. And you got your own Holy Ghost. But I need somebody to cover me. I'm so tired. Oh, yes, sir. So as I hasten to my clothes, as I hasten, I'm not, I told y'all I wasn't going to be long. As I hasten to my clothes, Bishop Cousin, when I found out in the Bible, when I was looking at it, I said, come on, child, and preach. When I was looking at my Bible, I found this to be going on even before we were born. There was a man by the name of Saul. He under the Bahasa because Israel did no longer want a God. They wanted a king. Because they wanted to look like the world. I know y'all ain't never read that. But just read it when you get home. They wanted to look like the world. They didn't want God no more. They didn't want to be. They wanted somebody to stand before them and go to war for them. And God said, He tells the prophet of God. He says, They have not rejected you. They rejected me. Can I tell you some leaders that I have to learn? I feel like preaching now. A long time ago, that when people don't receive your ministry, they ain't rejecting you. They're rejecting God. And Bishop does, and I sure appreciate you tonight. What I have to learn, Hasha, in these 22 years of ministry, is I can't spend too much time trying to get people that don't want me because I neglect the people that are celebrating me. Do me a favor and look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I ain't got no more time or energy to be dealing with folks that's fighting me. There are too many people that need the gift of God in your belly to be fighting with the same folks. Sometimes you got to do like the old song says.
days. I think I better let them go. Some people, God is waiting on you to release from your life so he can send the right people. Because you might be doing ministry with the wrong people. Let me prove it to you. Moses was walking with the wrong people because they fought God ten times. Open that time up, y'all. And let's go ahead and go home. And what happened, y'all? After they did not go for ten times, God said, Moses, I brought them out, but it was never about them. They had something in the inside of them that I wanted to get out. So I'm going to kill them because they didn't gave birth to what I really wanted to use.
He never went and got the glory. And because he didn't get the glory, the Amalekites came and he was thrown away by his own lust. How in the world can you kill women and children but you can keep animals alive? Yeah, I'm so divine. But you don't know what you would do if the glory of God was on your life. A lot of times we be trying to wonder how people are losing their mind. Tell your neighbor, it is because they ain't got no glory. So you know what happened? God has to raise up a man by the name of David. David was in the backyard. I'm out of here, y'all. He was in the backyard. And you know what God about David is that David was chasing him before God called him and that's the problem with this new church they don't want to chase God so they become a preacher that's the problem with this new church y'all don't want to chase God so it's time to preach that's the problem with this new church y'all don't want to chase God so it's your time to pray but I need you to look I'm a worshiper and that's the deal. Pending for the water brook. So my soul longs for him in the dry thirst of land where no water is. So David's chase. Got him cold. If you want to be cold, chase God. Be on the old side. If you want to be anointed, go back to his glory. Because God said the only reason I'm Cause David, he wants me He full of mistakes, full of issues But he won't be Do me a favor and tell your neighbor I ain't perfect And I know you can on my Facebook page Trying to see what God is using me I want to tell you so you can stay off on my page Tell the only reason I'm
you know how to handle it. I never host the about And that's, that's why I believe we are right now. We want God back, but we don't know how to handle it. Well, Leviticus tells us, Exodus tells us how to handle God. It says of those that approach me, I must be esteemed. It's holy. Do me a favor. Tell your neighbor, if you're going to go after God, you got to approach him carefully. Because not only is he a loving God, he's a righteous God. He has not something Tell him God got standards. You can't go to God in a time of way. But I might as well. Since I'm here, you can't be a homosexual and approach God. You Back. 
something that God freed him from. You know what I see? Michelle being, I see Michelle being a weight or a sin. And Galatians says, be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And God had freed David from Michelle a long time ago. But here he go, trying to grab her back. Because now, you know what he says, now that I'm king, she won't you. But I need you to do me a favor. And Bishop, maybe I'm just talking to you. I need you to live with your neighbor. And say, neighbor, there are some folks that ain't going to change regardless of how you change. Because they never wanted you. They just wanted to go where you were going. But go. And you know what he 
he said? He didn't even let her finish. If he was from North Memphis like I was, he, he said this. Shut up. I know that seems rude, but it's some spirits that's been talking too long in the church. And we don't need to tell them to be quiet. Can you breathe quiet down? Shut up. Because let me let you know something, Michelle. You are not the leader. You were never the leader. Matter of fact, your daddy was just holding the place that God had for me. So if you think your attitude is going to shift my preaching, Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. 
my home, Seattle. And the glory is going to fight for you. My Bible says that his glory shall be your rear guard. You know why? Because in this season of your life, you finna be so caught up enjoying what God is doing for you. You ain't gonna have time to look behind you. So the glory will be your real God. To make sure don't nothing come from your past. To try to sabotage your future. That's the word of the Lord. Clap your hands, church. Give God a praise. At this time, let us all step to our feet. And receive our honorees. Come on, begin to clap your hands and open up your mouth as we receive our bishop and our elect lady at this time. Bishop Ronnie and elect lady Stewart. Clap your hands, church. Come on.